Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simpervi, the also of WrestlingObserver.com. we got a million things to get into. No time to waste. But I'm going to get this WWE stuff out of the way first because, honestly, this is the story of the weekend to me. WWE ran a super show in Charlotte, North Carolina. For weeks, they have advertised that the main event in Charlotte involves Charlotte. Well, last night, the show takes place, and there's no Charlotte. And before the match, the fans chant, We want Charlotte! They bring out Rhea Ripley and Nikki Ash. The fans chant, We want Charlotte! The main event ends, and the fans chant, We want Charlotte! Well, there's no Charlotte in Charlotte, despite being advertised that Charlotte would be in Charlotte. Where is Charlotte? Oh, she's in Mexico, because Andrade is facing Kenny Omega, and Ric Flair is accompanying Andrade to the ring, and so Charlotte just went to Mexico. So I'm just like, what is going on here? Like, there's two options, obviously. I'm not blaming it on Charlotte. If Charlotte wants the day off, to go to Mexico to watch her AEW husband wrestle the AEW champion, accompanied by a guy who just got fired from WWE or quit, whatever the story is, who's going to be going to AEW. That's all fine and good. But, like, don't advertise Charlotte being in Charlotte for weeks and sell ticket anyway. I was like, whatever. That's story number one. Uh, Kenny Omega won, by the way. He beat Andrade. Originally, Andrade was going to beat Kenny Omega. But uh, to put a whole bunch of stories together, because everything in wrestling is now interconnected, unless you're in WWE, then you're just on this weird island. Hangman Page, his wife is going to give birth right around the time of All Out. He pulled out of the show. They needed a new challenger. Challenger ends up being Christian. Christian is a weak challenger. So to try to make Christian a strong challenger, they book Christian versus Kenny Omega for the Impact title on the debut of Rampage. Christian beats Kenny Omega. He wins the Impact title. The next day, Kenny Omega goes to Mexico, where he's supposed to lose to Andrade. AEW decides, we don't want this guy losing two nights in a row. So because they have booking power over Kenny Omega, they requested that Kenny Omega win the match on Saturday night at Triple Mania. So Andrade was supposed to win, but he didn't win. Kenny Omega won. Kenny Omega is still the uh, super mega heavyweight champion of Triple A. Have I got all this square, by the way? Which is pretty amazing when you think about it. So anyway, uh, Kenny Omega uh, retains the title against Andrade. Christian has won the title from Kenny Omega, the Impact title, which means Christian will now be defending the Impact title against Brian Myers at the next Impact show. I think I got this all squared away. So anyway, and then Charlotte showed up to watch all of this while not showing up at the Charlotte house show where Charlotte was billed to be in the main event of that show. Point of all of this is, I'm watching all of this stuff going on in wrestling all over the world. And AW, I mean, they're doing extraordinarily well for two years in business. CM Punk is debuting on Friday, unless like, I don't know, something could go wrong, I suppose. But otherwise, he's going to debut on Friday. Brian Danielson's probably coming in. Somehow, and I don't even know how... You have got AW, New Japan, Impact, and AAA all working together. And somehow, they're all navigating these political waters. It's actually really amazing when you think about it. And meanwhile, do you guys remember uh, the Monday Night Wars? Some of you might remember this. Some of you old people, the Monday Night Wars, where, you know, there was, there was WWF, and then there was WCW, and then in 1995... WCW decided that they were going to go head-to-head with Monday Night Raw on Monday nights. And everyone thought they were going to get killed. And in fact, they did not get killed. And over the course of a couple of years, they eventually began to beat WWF in the Monday Night Wars. And one of the reasons they began beating WWF in the Monday Night Wars was because WWF had lost a lot of big stars, physically and otherwise. And so they pushed a new generation but they also had a bunch of dinosaurs and slow-moving guys, and it was it was just it came across so old and uncool. Gimmicks. And all of a sudden, you you turn on WCW, and there are these luchadors flying around. They're doing high spots. It's exciting, 
You've got an invasion that's pushed as like, you know, they'd stolen that idea from Japan. Anyway, everything about WCW at the beginning, not at the end, I might add, but at the beginning when they were hot, everything was brand new. And uh, WWF started to be beaten. Do you know what WWF did when they started getting beaten by WCW? They started stealing things that were working from elsewhere in the world. All of a sudden, they're doing hardcore like ECW. All of a sudden, they're getting edgy like ECW. All of a sudden, they've got a light heavyweight division, which didn't work, but they got it. Much like the WCW Cruiserweight division. They, they, were, they were dragged kicking and screaming into the modern world. So I bring this all up because the no-shows... The the firing of half of NXT under six feet, the desire to only hire people who are above 6'2 and 225. What is happening right now is if in 1995, WCW started kicking WWF's ass and Vince decided, we're going to go back to 91. Let's go back to 1992. Bring back Papa Shango. Let's not do the, the ECW style hardcore uh, you know, PG-13, whatever. Not the tag team, but, like, the rating. Let's not do any of that. Let's go back to 91 and all that stuff that didn't work then. Oh, well, that's what we're doing right now. This time, everybody, this time it's going to work. We'll get rid of all these skinny, small, indie geeks. No more vanilla midgets. Let's get the big guys. Let's get all the big, strong men. Anyway, I, I'm just flabbergasted watching. It's very exciting. Don't get me wrong. I'm very excited, as you can probably tell, by, like, the coming week and the coming months and the coming years. But it is baffling to watch uh, WWE's response to all of this. Going back to big, slow blokes with muscles. That'll solve this problem. Now you got me Rolodexing PG-13 moments in my brain, Brian. Thank you very much for that. After all that wrestling over this weekend, now all I can think of is Wolfie D and J.C. Ice, Jamie Dundee. Thank you Bro, for that. Bro, they're literally going back to Papa Shango. They are yeah. literally going back to did. Voodoo. They did already. They've oh, man, this. we've got this company that's gone from zero to 60 in two years. I know it'll solve this problem. Voodoo. Big muscle men that can't work. That'll solve the problem. Because they're going to be going back through them airports again. We need large men Gotta and hot out. women. That's yeah. what's going to solve this problem. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.